Okay, all right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Art As Well. This is our 16th episode, and this is your weekly source of inspiration, education, and I suppose motivation, really, because it's something that we artists all need. And my guest today is an American fine artist, Vincent Gerano. And boy, is this guy motivated. <laughs> he certainly is. You should wait till you hear his work schedule. Um, I'm delighted that uh, Vincent is joining us. And I'm also very grateful to Colleen Blackard, who is responsible for putting the two of us together. Because Colleen, I met in the Kilreelig Artist Residency down in Kerry last year. And um, she featured on one of our episodes, as, as most of you probably know. And she said, oh, you must have Vincent on. He's, he's a fabulous artist and you love his work. And right enough, when I looked at his work, I was bowled over by it. It is just phenomenal and very much in the sort of genre that I particularly like. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Colleen, for that. Now, Vincent was born in Buffalo, um, in New York. Um, he studied in the State College there and then went on to study fine art. He got a master's in fine art in the Syracuse. Um, he lives in Madison, I think it's Madison, Vincent, in Connecticut, which is about a two hour uh, drive up from New York City. Um, but a lot of your work and a lot of your subject matter is gleaned from New York City and the people you know there, the artists uh, and the streets and so on. Um, and we're gonna see a lot of your work later on. But first, um, I want to say hello to you. Thank you so much for coming on The Artist Well today. And uh, you're very welcome. Hi, Alan. Hi, Thanks for having me on here. Pleasure. And thank you for getting up so early in the morning. Uh, yeah, it's a little early for me, but uh, I'm up. Well, it's called a compromise. It's called a compromise. <laughs> yeah. So let's go back to, to the start of your career. I mean, drawing was something you were always interested in. I mean, does this go back to school days as against college? Uh, I started drawing really young. Um, my first experiences, I remember it was, um, it was just so fascinating to be able to draw something like what I was seeing. I think I did some cartoons or something like that. Yep. And um, it was just this thrill I got from being able to accomplish something, you know, with drawing. Mm -hmm. and it just like motivated me to, to do more. And um, it was just like this, uh, this great feeling you get from, you know, accomplishing that. And so I, right off the bat, I was, I was drawn into it and um, I just kept at it. And it was right from the start, it was like uh, the thing for me. And um, it was always my focus. Yeah, yeah. So you went on then to university and you studied uh, fine art? Yes, uh, I, I'm from Buffalo. So I went to the University of Buffalo. I did my undergrad there four years. And then I wanted to do more. So I just went on to grad school and did uh, three years uh, grad school. And I was majoring in sculpture. All right, okay, okay. And your, your, the direction of your career then took, took a bit of a change from what you were sort of in, in a sense trained to do. Oh, How you mean going about? to illustration? Yeah. Um, I always did illustration. Um, I was always into, um, animation and um, I loved film and I loved uh, comic books. Everything really was geared towards um, the visual uh, storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I landed with uh, comic books because it afforded me the opportunity to, to do so much more. I mean, like uh, animation and film, you're just like one small part of a big thing. So I found with um, graphic novels, comic books, that one or two people, you could realize your whole idea. It just mm -hmm. was so much uh, more rewarding creatively. Creatively, exactly, because you, you had more of a say in what you were doing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You could do the whole thing. It's like making your own film. Yes, yes, yes. And when, how long were you doing that for before you changed tech? Well, um, after college, well, I started doing a little bit of it in college. And then when I got out of college, I really went after it. I didn't feel anything for the art world. It didn't make sense to me. All the postmodern uh, 
sort of aesthetic. Yes. I mean, I was doing that sort of thing in college, but in the real world, it didn't make sense to me. Um, and I needed to make a living. So uh, getting into comic books was, uh, you know, such a great thing for me. I was able to make a living and um, I was in New York City uh, mm -hmm. after college. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. Well, I did that for a long time. Yeah, and that, that obviously paid the bills very well. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. And it was, um, it was such a fun job. Uh, mm -hmm. I just enjoyed it uh, yes. so much. Yeah. And did you do book illustration as well? I did. Uh, the comic market sort of hit a slump, and mm -hmm. so I shifted over to other illustration work. Yes. And it was, it was good money, and I was able to, um, you know, keep working. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like it. it. It just was, it wasn't fun. It wasn't interesting, and um, it sort of, so you're, you're constrained, constrained artistically or creatively. Yeah, it was removed. Yeah. It was like computer work. Um, yeah. Little by little, more and more, it was just like being a photo retoucher. Mm. And so at that point, I, I knew I needed something else. Yes, yes. And then you, you, you progressed on to, to fine art painting. And how, I mean, that, that, that is obviously very, very different to what you were doing. Well, it was almost like returning to what I originally started with, um, yeah. you know, being a fine artist. Um, you know, I loved rendering. And that was the thing, the illustration work, it wasn't any more about rendering and physical, you know, creativity yeah. that I, I like. And so uh, I started writing about um, what I was feeling and um, sort of searching what it was I wanted to do because I knew that I wasn't doing uh, the thing that I needed to. Mm -hmm. So I started this process of writing uh, and right around that time I was going to uh, figure drawing mm -hmm. and I hadn't done that in a long time and that was something I really loved from college was um, figure drawing and actually when I was in New York too um, uh, figure drawing uh, was uh, something I did with a friend so that was uh, that was great to get back to that and hang out with other artists, and it started me thinking and um, writing about what I could do. Yes. And I, for the first time, I started to see fine art as something that could be a, a, a career, mm -hmm. not just you know for fun. Yeah, and I, I believe writing is is something that 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 you take very very seriously uh, as almost. A therapeutic thing, but also as something that helps you make your plans and guides you throughout your career. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you're probably the first person I've met who used the word business plan. That you uh, yeah, you were an uh, artist who was a business plan. A friend of mine at uh, Figure Drawing. Uh, I was talking to him about you know being a professional artist, and he said the first thing you have to do is uh, make a business plan. And I was like, I I have no idea what that is, <laughs> and. Um, I couldn't get any more information out of them. So I just started thinking on my own, you know, what's a business plan? What could that be? And I just, you know, thinking logically, mm. tried to figure out, you know, what to do. Yes. So I just wrote about it. I wrote everything I could think um, an artist could do. And then um, I sort of developed a plan for what, what I wanted. And it was kind of like, um, a dream plan. It didn't even seem at first to be something I could do. Mm -hmm. But uh, through writing, I was able to figure it out and form a plan and a direction and goals. And um, then I came up with a five-year plan to, to implement uh, a transition. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I figured out that, you know, writing makes things happen. And yes. um, it's it, things in your head are just, uh, they disappear. And through sure. writing and figuring it out and putting it down, uh, things started to happen. And um, yeah. it just snowballed from there. I, I've heard a lot of people who, who are doing that, journaling. Uh, you may not call it journaling, but it comes to the same thing, where <clears throat> literally you, it's almost you're like, like writing a diary, but not in a structured manner. You know, it, yeah. it could be, as you say, notes. It could be notes. It could be experiences. You know, something went wrong. So you make a note of that and why you think it went wrong. 
a lot of entries are just lists. Yeah, exactly. And um, research. Yeah. And I think uh, it's a very important thing for for young people uh, or or people who are trying to make a career in art that they should treat it like a business. You know, it is a small business. It's a small shop. Absolutely. Uh, You've got stock taking. You've got your, your frames. You've got your canvases. You've got your paints. You've got to do promotion. You've got to get out and meet people. All of those sort of things that are no different for an artist than they are for somebody who's got a corner shop. That's right. Uh, there's all the business side and there's the creative side. Yeah. And uh, you have to do your research and figure things out. And yeah. it's different for every person. Absolutely. Okay. Listen, let's, there's, there's a lot I want to cover as well, but I think we might be, be covering it through looking at some of your work. Yeah. So okay. this, this was a plain air painting, and um, that was some of my early experience. Um, you know, from the life drawing group, uh, a bunch of us were excited about plain air painting. And so we got together and we went out and painted. Mm -hmm. So I was learning a lot from the people that I was hanging out with, other artists. And... Um, plein air painting was like a real boom at that time. Um, so this is like about, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. So I just was painting anything. Um, we would also get a model and do a long pose for an afternoon, a single pose so that we could paint. Oh, sorry. Um, do long drawings. Yeah. Um, and I was experimenting with, you know, anything. I just needed to figure out painting. Mm -hmm. So I was doing landscapes, still life. Um, that was uh, a lake nearby, and that, that was a plain air painting. Um, but I figured out through writing and experience that I didn't want to be a plain air painter. So that was, um, that was up in Maine. And this was a key painting for me because it really, um, it was like a big step for me. Um, I accomplished something, you know, that I was really looking for. Yes. And it was great to get, you know, get a handle on it. Mm -hmm. But I also, I was, I was enjoying where I was at. You know what I mean? It, yep. it, sometimes it's hard to appreciate the point that you're at, but I really was just like thrilled and uh, amazed at how differently I was seeing the world because I was seeing it through the lens of a, a painter. And uh, it really opened my eyes and um, I was just enjoying it so much. Vincent, if you take this one here in particular now, yeah. would, 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 would that have been an observation where you, you took a, a reference photograph or, or was that set up uh, with a model that you knew? Um, so this was some of my early experience, and mm -hmm. um, I took a bunch of photos, and then I worked on it in the studio. And I started to see that I wanted to paint things that, you know, weren't, weren't subjects like a bowl of fruit or a landscape. I wanted to paint things that were about a moment in time. And so I found that... Um, the experiences I had with plein air painting really informed my painting. So even though I was painting in the studio, I really was thinking a lot about those experiences um, painting from life. And I found that it's kind of the same experience for me. When you're painting from life, you're not just painting exactly what you see, you're you're kind of distilling uh, the information. So it's what you're looking at is reference and what you're painting has to be changed to work. So I find if I have enough visual information, it doesn't matter, I don't have to be there. And if anything, I'm able to really focus more and accomplish the kind of painting I want. Yes. Um, which is a little more resolved than you can do in a plein air session. Sure, okay. I was studying painters like uh, Sargent and Zorn and Sorroyo, and I was uh, getting back in touch with uh, the realists uh, that I loved, you know, from, from college. 
Mm -hmm. And I started experimenting with uh, the city again. I'd moved out of the city uh, and I hadn't been there in a long time. So getting back to the city, it, it, it started to hit me as a subject because I was seeing it uh, in a different way because I was seeing it as a painter, not just someone living in the city, which after a while you stop seeing it. Um, and so I could really feel the impact of it more now. Okay. And um, so I started just painting it and it really made sense to me. Okay. I love this one. I, it's just the, 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 the sun, sunlight and the reflections and so on, are just beautiful. Thanks. I don't usually paint sunlight. Mm. Um, and this is part of the writing uh, component is I was figuring out all the different aspects for my paintings, like how do I feel about paint? How do I feel about light? Uh, and it's like you have to find your voice. And so one of the things that I found I liked best was cool, even light because it created um, the mood that I wanted. Um, but, you know, every once in a while you have to push yourself out of uh, that, um, what you usually do. And so I would do pieces like this. Yes. And it's good to continually, you know, challenge yourself, different, you know, different subjects. But I also was starting to pick up on the fact that uh, narrative was yeah. was coming up in my work, and I liked that. So, if I would see something that I liked in my work, I would write about it, and then I would consciously add it in. And so it was this process of trying things out, and if they worked, I would write about them and sort of cement it into my concept. Mm -hmm. And so um, I felt like I was getting a fuller um, impression uh, of what I wanted. Right. And I started working with people. Yeah. And I found that I, I liked working with people that, and painting people that I didn't know because I could see them so much more uh, objectively. Like I'd painted people that I, I knew very well and painting someone that you don't know that well is a completely different experience. So that became also part of my process and my concept was um, this sort of uh, part you don't know becomes sort of a mysterious aspect. Yes. And, and so, I yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Vincent. I, I, noticed, I noticed that a lot, of, a lot of the models aren't looking at you. They're not looking at the viewer. Is that an intentional thing? Yes. Um, when Quite someone that. is looking at you, there's a connection and it means a different thing and there's a different impression. And I found that by disrupting that, um, that was a way for, it became more of a genre painting mm -hmm. uh, rather than a portrait. So it's a very fine line, you know, between the two. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think when people are looking at you, they're far more conscious of their pose, their facial expression, everything. And, and it, it, it sort of, they become less real yeah. because they're actually trying to put on something. Whereas when they're looking away, they can, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a completely different thing. I was exploring, I was exploring trying to capture uh, someone who's like um, not aware of, of yeah. posing. Yes. Even though it, it took a lot of work to get that, I wanted to capture something that was about real life and about that feeling that you have in real life. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Now, sorry, you, you better explain this one. <laughs> uh, this was an experiment. Yeah. Um, it was someone's closet that I saw in the city. And to me, it, it really, it was a challenge because of the subtlety uh, in it, in all the white area, mm -hmm. but then you have the stark black. And so you've got this big contrast, but also there's something about the subject, just a simple closet that really um, spoke to me. And I felt said something about New York City. Um, 
And when I painted this, uh, the reaction I got from people was really big. So mm -hmm. I knew that, you know, people were responding to it. And so I would write about it and think about it and um, repaint. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got good feedback on that. Yeah. Every once in a while, you know, you see stuff like that happen. And this is extraordinary, the detail here, and it's, it's just so moody, isn't it? Um, that, was, uh, that was a cool piece for me. Uh, I got to work with someone who was very different, you know, from my life, uh, this fashionista. Yeah. And basically a very wealthy woman who her whole, her whole passion was clothing and um, fashion. And so I got to paint her while she was um, at uh, Fashion Week in New York City. And I really wanted to capture something, you know, authentic about her. She blogged about fashion. And so I did this piece. I did a study and then I did this piece. And this piece got in the, um, the BP, which is a big show in London. Of course, the, yeah, the portrait. portrait award. Yeah, fantastic. So it was a really good experience. <clears throat> Excellent. Now, it's as, this is as much about what's on the wall as the person nearly, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was finding that the paintings were partly what I would learn about this person that I didn't know. And then what I didn't know about them uh, allowed me to sort of project my thoughts and what I imagined or uh, the narrative I saw. And so I found the paintings were kind of a, a combination of those two things, things I would learn about that person, things I would see in the experience of working with them. And then uh, I would write before working with them and I would write after working with them and I would sort of uh, bring it all together and um, you know, come yeah. up with something sometimes never even existed because I was cobbling so much together. Sure, yeah, yeah. And I, I love painting, I love painting things about contemporary life. Um, I also found that um, painting women was just such an enjoyable thing for me. I've always loved the history of um, women, uh, artists painting women, and um, I've always found that interesting. Mm. And um, I just find women so much more interesting uh, to paint. Uh, the, 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 clothing, the clothing for one, and the, yeah. they're more adventurous as far as what they do and how they express themselves. And uh, just the things they do and uh, greater um, sort of mood and, and range of yes. expression. And so yeah. more and more, I just found that was what I like, but you know. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, moved, I moved too quickly there probably. No, that's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, architecture was also a huge thing. I mean, in the city, you basically have architecture and figures. Mm -hmm. So uh, the combination is great, uh, but also just, just looking at the amazing architecture. Absolutely. T tell me, Vincent, w would you have drawn an outline of that first? You know, in, uh, in other words, w would you have approached that in a very technical way? Or were oh, you literally uh, just looking at it and placing well, light wherever um, you wanted? I can do small studies, mm -hmm. uh, or I can do um, a sort of a loose start um, which is just, you know, uh, amorphic, you know, shapes of paint. Yep. Or I could, or I sometimes uh, do kind of a resolved um, drawing and then work up from that. And sometimes very little drawing, you know, just enough to give me um, uh, a chance to start painting. Sure. Positions or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I have different ways of working. Mm. This is one of my studies. Mm -hmm. um, I found that, you know, just doing a figure study for a painting um, helped me to um, figure things out. So, and, then, and, and this is the same person, is it, was, was that yeah. how you started that? 
Um, well, th there was the study and then the oh. final painting. All right, uh, the two separate. Yeah, and yeah. I figure out, you know, what I want to change, how to make it work better. And mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's more enjoyable doing um, more than just one painting. Yeah. And I found that it made the painting stronger to do more work. Okay. And um, typically, I know, I know it's, it's how long is a piece of string and it depends on the size, but how long would you spend on a painting with this sort of detail? Um, I don't really keep track of painting time too much, okay. um, but before I start a painting, I have an idea of what I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so I never am in the position where it's just, um, I'm lost and just not knowing when a painting is finished. I have a very clear idea of what I want to accomplish and I go about it in a way that I definitely know when it's finished. Okay. Um, and would you work on one painting at a time or could you have several on the go? I only do one painting at a time. That was something I figured out early on. Yeah. Uh, as well as the other thing of um, not having resolve in my painting process. Uh, I would do paintings and I would just become lost and I would start to dislike the painting because it just wasn't, um, I didn't have enough confidence in what was being accomplished. And so yeah. I, through writing and experience, I geared my process to give me the experience I wanted. Um, like I would, I would have such a great time early in the painting and then as the painting would go along, I would have less energy and less interest in the painting until I didn't like the painting. And so I changed my process to eliminate that feeling and also the, um, to eliminate the chance of the painting failing. Yes. Because um, I didn't like when a painting failed and I found I was not in control of the painting failing. And so I cut back on that uh, severely by changing my process. Did you ever abandon a painting? Uh, yeah, and I didn't like that either. That for me, that's a fail. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to work on one painting. I like to finish the painting and feel that it's a successful painting. Yeah. Okay. Very good. If it if it wasn't, I would just um, scrape it down or I would paint over it. Yes. Yes. Okay. But I I didn't keep uh, paintings mm -hmm. that didn't work. You don't slash your canvases and throw them in the corner. No, uh, I loved I loved the experience of making it work by painting it again. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, now this is an interesting one because from my memory, um, that's an initial painting and then you're populating it, if you like, and refining it. Yeah, this is one of my studies yeah. um, and just trying to figure out a setting. And then uh, I work with someone to, um, you know, make it into a finished piece. And that's the finished piece. That's the finished piece. Fantastic. Just look back for a second and look, look at how, what it was to now. And Beautiful. I found that, you know, collectors uh, really responded to um, certain qualities, like more of a finished painting than a plain air painting. So, you know, I had a number of sources telling me, you know, directing my work. Um, and so also I would look at uh, the market. Uh, yeah. So I looked at the market and there were so many plain air painters. I thought, well, it's, it could be a glut. Um, you know, and you're competing against so many people. Yes. And then also maybe those aren't the qualities I want. And so through writing and figuring things out, I was able to direct my work, mm -hmm. the business side of my work uh, yeah. that way. Very good. Very good. And these are all people I worked with. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that, you know, you really need to, to control the figure and, um, you need to experiment a lot with different views and mm. um, more information in order to make it work. Yeah. Uh, this was someone I worked with in Brooklyn. I worked a number of times with um, Alex and she was just such an interesting person. Every 
once in a while you you work with someone and there's just something about them that um, good things come from it. And mm -hmm. so, oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Um, and uh, she she over the years changed, um, but everything I did with her worked out so well. There was just something about her um, that was interesting. And I loved her. I loved her room, and it really started me um, painting interiors that were like this, where you see sort of a, a glimpse of someone's life. Um, and certain rooms, like a bedroom, is where uh, someone's like personality is like all over the walls. And I yeah. found that that was such a interesting um, view of life. It just creates great, great, such a story. Yeah, narrative. Not the individual, it's not just the room. It's the connection right. between the two. It's like a portrait of the person, but in the room, the interior, is talking about the person's character as much as their likeness. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's fun. And um, I loved uh, spaces that were interesting, like um, this was my initial study of um, this uh, person's room. It was a factory, mm -hmm. and I loved when people make weird sort of um, interiors. This was her bedroom and closet. And then there's the final painting. Oh my God, it's extraordinary. Thank you. I, Can I ask you, how much time do you spend mixing colors, getting colors right, and then applying them? You know, is, is it sort of 90, 10? Um, well, the thing, the thing that I focus on when I'm painting is um, I, I keep in mind that the scene I'm painting is, well, in most cases, it's being bathed in one light. Yeah. And so that one light is creating a harmony because that light is affecting everything in the scene. So in the back of my mind, I, I think about that harmony of light. And if I can capture that, then I feel like more than you know details and things like that that's what makes it feel like a real thing yeah so i think about that and mm -hmm. uh, mixing is important um you got to mix everything and i don't pre-mix uh unless i'm doing a big area mm -hmm. and i need a bigger puddle of you know something uh, yeah. other than that i don't pre-mix so it's really responding to each individual thing i see fantastic yeah so I like mixing with a brush more than a palette knife. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now this obviously shows your, your interest in the, in the fashion business as well. Yeah, that was, yeah. even from a young age, I've always been fascinated by the um, clothing industry. Uh, it's just such an amazing thing. And it's so huge and varied. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's something that uh, is like, a, to me, a classic, uh, subject like um, architecture, yeah, or the figure. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to talk through this one? Um, I've always wanted to do something uh, like someone in a hotel room and uh, like a small moment in life, a quiet moment. And uh, to me, I I feel like these subjects it it speaks about the human experience. Mm -hmm. And that's something I, I think a lot about uh, with my work and the subjects and the mood and the setting. Um, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's the lovely, the richness of the color in this is wonderful. Now this actually did not look like that. So when I'm painting something, I, I make choices. It's like any when you're plein air painting, you're making choices, and that's what I learned from it. You don't just paint what you see; you edit, you move things around, you change things uh, to make the painting work. And mm -hmm. um, it's the same when I'm in the studio. Um, I change whatever I I feel needs to for the painting to be stronger, to work better. But would you, you wouldn't have changed the blue there, would you? That was not there. Was it not? No. Because I, I, always, I always think that, you know, if you, if you have a color like that blue, which is very, very strong, yeah. but it affects everything in the room by virtue of reflection. I kept that in mind. 
Yeah. You know, okay. In mind the light. But I felt like it, the person's personality mm. needed something more powerful. Okay. So that was yeah. a big thing. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. This is lovely too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I was thinking a lot about Sargent and how, you know, his work, um, is so painterly and color driven. Um, I mean, when you look at one of his paintings up close, it's loose and almost crudely painted. Yeah. But when you step back, you have this great um, realistic experience. But you don't, you don't have that luxury in a small painting. Um, actually, you do no. because you can't fuss over it as much and you try not to use too small of a brush. And so just the dynamic of the scale changes yeah. how you paint. All right, okay. I like that. I like that um, I can change my process or change my scale and it affects how I paint. Mm. Or I could, I could tell myself I'm only gonna paint on this for a limited amount of time. That also changes how you paint. Yeah. And those are all great experiences. And tell me, do you use a limited palette or is, it, is your palette quite extensive depending obviously on, on your choice? I started, of off with, I started off with a limited palette yeah. Um, because I thought that was a good direction to add colors rather than um, have too many and be overwhelmed. Yes. So my original palette was really limited. Uh, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, and a, uh, viridian, and yeah. white. And brown? Did you use burnt sienna? Not at first. No? I think okay. I added that. All right. Yeah. Okay. And I added more blues, more reds. I added an orange. So, you know, it was good experience to add to my palette rather than, you know, yes. be overwhelmed yes. by it. Okay. How, how, how big is this particular painting? Uh, 24 by 36. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think a lot about scale. And that's another thing about doing small studies is it, it helps me to figure out um, scale as well as all the other things I need to figure out. Uh, whether I like the subject or not, um, the composition, what I could do to improve it, and um, the scale. I love it. And what I would change. Yeah. Oh, another thing is um, I like, I found I liked working in series. Um, and that was something I admired from some of my favorite artists. Um, so I wrote and thought about working in series and I experienced that and it really made sense to me. So I have like, um, I have like a umbrella concept that encompasses all my work. Mm -hmm. And then within that I have separate concepts. Yes. Um, so it all goes together, but there's little differences. Yeah like the last one uh, and other paintings like that, it's no figures, just architecture. Mm. Um, but in a way it's about people because it's about people's effect on architecture. Yeah. So yeah. You know, I write about my ideas, I explore them, I experiment, and little by little you focus um, your concept. Yeah. So you got the, fl the, the flag correct there, you got the right colors for the flag. <laughs> 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 oh, tell me about this. Um, a lot of times I'll work with people that are just normal people, regular people, and sometimes I'll work with someone who's a professional, and mm -hmm. it's like working with a trained actress. It's such a different experience because you tell them what you're looking for, and they present you with things that are just so much uh, more. They, they have experience, and so this was someone that I, I knew about her work. I saw her, I saw her work, uh, she was mostly posing for photographers. And even though she was working with different people, I saw consistently that she was just producing amazing uh, mood and um, intensity. And yeah. so um, I felt like it had to be coming from her, not the, just the people who she was working with. And so I got to work with her in the city and um, it was really good experience. Um, she's an interesting person, very contemporary. 
And so, um, uh, but this is someone who's just, who's just a, a regular person that I worked with. Mm -hmm. And so both experiences are good. Um, and you never know how things are going to go. Uh, but before I work with someone, I write about what I expect to do and what I, my ideas are. And then I put that aside. And when I'm working with someone, I'm open to what happens in that experience and what I see. And then afterwards, I sort of combine those things and work at developing um, something that I think is going to be, you know, a good painting. Fantastic, yeah. And then there's studies and stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm going to flick through a few of these because I'm conscious sure. that we want to have some time for Q and A's. Okay. Um, stop, me if you, stop me if you particularly want to talk about uh, one, one of the, the paintings, okay? Okay, go ahead. Uh, actually, understood. just to explain this one, because I know she figures in it. The last one was the study. This is the study of the figure. And then probably the next one is that, yeah. the final piece. And you can see what I changed. I changed a lot of things. But she was never there. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Lovely. That was a large painting. Was it? Uh, yes. Every once in a while, it's good to do something very large because it it really stretches you, mm -hmm. and you gain experience from it. But then also doing really small paintings, you get great experience from that, and it all you know informs each other. Okay. Um, tell me just on on the the whole business of of collectors and and people who buy your work. Do you, do you find that there are certain people who will buy a lot of your work? or does it spread out quite a, quite a lot? I know that sounds a bit weird, but um, you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. Would most, you have hardcore collectors, in other words? Most collectors buy multiple pieces. Yeah. Uh, but there are some that just buy one, but uh, quite often it's a number of pieces. Oh, and sometimes at once and sometimes over time, you know, yes. they'll keep collecting. Yeah. yeah. I think this is the same model that you had earlier, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, her hair changed over the years, um, but this is what she had at this one time. And I felt like there was something about her. She really reflected, her personality reflected things I felt about the city and I wanted to capture that. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to paint someone sunbathing on a roof. I always had it in my mind. I'd written about it. And yeah. um, then eventually it, it, one time, I didn't even know it was gonna happen. And, we talked about doing a roof thing and it sort of just happened. And mm. um, so sometimes, you know, you can plan for things and sometimes they just sort of come about, but I had it in mind and um, so I'm like really happy to do that. It's like synchronicity, isn't it? Yeah. If it's in your mind, you'll find it eventually. And sometimes it's just amazing, like um, so many different elements come together and uh, work out so well. Rooftops are another, you know, um, sort of side uh, concept I like to explore. It's such a different um, setting. So when, when you would do exhibitions, Vincent, would, would you have ones that would be specifically about rooftops? Um, whenever I do a show, I, I think yeah. about what I want to say about the show. So I, I put some thought into, you know, yeah. the, the theme of the show or the title of the show or the concept for the show. Exactly, yeah. Now, that's the cover of your book. It if is. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, do, do, uh, you, do you have a copy of that? I do. I just, uh, I just came out with this, and mm -hmm. I'm really happy about doing it. It was a fun project. And it's called City Life. City Life, yeah, and they have it on, I have it on my website, or you can get it through Lulu. Lulu, yeah, yeah. So is that self-published then, is it? It is. Um, I looked at different ways of doing a book, and hmm. um, that made more sense to me. And uh, It's a fabulous idea. I wanted, so I'm very happy with going that way. I know, and there's so, so little outlay, it's, it's sort of produced to order. 
Yeah, there's no upfront money, so it's print on demand. So that was another thing I I didn't uh, you know want to um, spend a lot and do like a huge print run. So yeah. print on demand uh, is a great solution. It's a fabulous solution. Fabulous solution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. More flexibility. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, that same girl I talked about who was a professional uh, model. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. And this was a, a, a different thing for me, that last one, to, um, to do that sort of perspective. Yes. So every once in a while, I, I try to uh, challenge myself. And um, it's great because you find new ideas, new ground, um, when you try things that are, you know, yeah. you're, not, you're not sure about. Wonderful. Now, this is this is the the last few slides before we go on to our Q and A, sure. and it it gives a flavor of of your technique. Now, I'm sure you have loads of different techniques, but this I one I, just, I find it so interesting the way it's developed. So, if you wouldn't mind talking us through this, Vincent. Okay, I think it's great to have a variety of ways of painting. It makes it more interesting, and you get different results. And so. I really love that aspect of, of painting, uh, to be able to approach a painting in different ways. Like uh, doing a plein air painting is different than working in the studio. And um, you know, both, both you can do different uh, processes. Um, so uh, for me, this is a, a, a loose uh, start mm -hmm. um, rather than a resolved start. So there's no drawing. Um, no. The drawing is actually just large, um, thin locking uh, in of paint. Yeah. Okay. And also, there's a, a focus on not not having too much resolve. So I'm thinking about and focusing on the colors more than the drawing. Hmm. Okay. Well, I move ahead. And. Um, it's just great to experience, you know, that looseness and you start to see things. Um, it's great when you work and, and you have like happy accidents that occur, um, things you don't intend, but you know, they work out nice. So this, this way of working, you know, allows for that. Yeah, so now we're slowly but surely getting there. Yeah, it's like focusing in um, on an image yeah. from out of focus to in focus. And and you, you work around the picture rather than concentrate on any one particular part of it? In this process, that's, that's what I do. But yeah. um, other processes, I do uh, finish as I go, um, which is a, a totally different experience, but it's a good one. Yeah. So nearly there. And then the last one, I think. No, second last, nope. is it? There's others. One more there. That's it. There was also there was um, things I edited out. I think there was a big ladder on the right side that was up to a loft, mm -hmm. and I found that I didn't need that, and it didn't add anything to the painting. And it yes, it's better without it. So I just took it out. Very good. That's wonderful, and I mean it gives such a great flavor of uh, of your work from early on okay. to now. But no, no comic book illustrations. Um, <laughs> I think I had given you some, but we 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 had too many images. Oh, so we did. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, um, Vincent, we're going to open it up to the floor and sure. see see if we have any questions. Uh, hi. Do you use very small brushes for the details of the figures in your paintings? Uh, I guess my smallest brush is like a one. Uh, just like a sable brush. Yes. Um, but I have all different size brushes and I sometimes I force myself to use the biggest brush I can, you know, mm -hmm. to avoid getting too tight. Yeah. Cabrini says, yes, Vincent's work is very reminiscent of Hopper as an editor. A lot of people see Hopper in my work. Yeah. Um, is also a commercial artist in New York. Andrew Wyeth is another artist who comes to mind. I love Wyeth and um, especially the extent of studies that he did and um, how he was able to do something that was a portrait, but it wasn't a portrait. Yeah. He made it so much more than a portrait. Yes. 
Yes. It was a great painting, not just a portrait. Yeah. Um, so much, de Yvonne says, so much detail in e.g. the Chinese restaurant. How, many, how much time, for instance, does this take? Days, months, years? Never looks, like, it looks like years, Vincent. Maybe a month. Yeah. That was something that was important to me was to not spend so much time on a painting. So there was the quality I wanted in the, the paint, and there was also the quality of the experience. And so I wanted it to look like how I wanted, and I also wanted the experience not to be a, a bad experience. So um, between the two, I, I made my working time uh, match what I wanted to get. Yes. yes. And I, I don't want to kill a painting, you know, and mm. I don't want to hate a painting. Yeah. So yeah. I was after that. Okay. Um, Colleen Blackheart says, I love the texture you build up on the walls. It's both gestural and lifelike. Cool, so true. Right. Yeah, that's fun. And I'm always trying to push myself and, you know, you never just like, you never just like reach a point and just coast, you know, you, you should always like be challenging yourself, I think, and um, working at things, you know? Yes, yes. Autumn says, detailed and atmospheric. I love the mixture of architecture and portrait styles. Your color palette within each painting is also beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> As I have an online class beginning. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye. Autumn. <laughs> Sorry we missed you there. Uh, Aliko says, love your work. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Dr. Noel Campbell-Sharp, can I talk to Vincent? Of course you can, provided yeah. you're unmuted. Can you unmute yourself if you... Uh, Say hello. Am... Yeah, there you are. Okay, off you go. Um, Vincent, hello there. Um, Noel. Hi. Down, down in Balanskelix. I don't know if you can see out the window here at our art center. Uh, oh. Probably is too much sun going on down here. Yeah. Uh, to see the mountain and Alan, of course, some of you know it very well. Yes. Uh, really, our artist's retreat. And, uh, you know, it's interesting hearing you talk about where your background and then where you are now, because it's very similar to my own, because I used to have a magazine company, uh, was a fashion editor, uh, very much involved in that world. And then in fact, of course, um, I see in your work the, um, uh, that sort of, um, you know, hard, difficult transition from um, fashion illustration and the perfection of it all. And then that sort of looseness, you know, and I can see it progressing in the, the paintings I've seen of yours just here. And I think you could probably do very well from uh, a residency at Kilrillic. Oh, uh, here. Up on this mountain. Because I think actually that, you know, I love your looser work, um, um, you know, and you still have a bit of a journey to go, I feel. Maybe oh, I'm sure. wrong. Um, but so Alan knows all about it. And indeed, uh, some of you people as well, my wonderful yeah. uh, friends in the United Arts Club. Um, and I hope to see you guys someday soon because, you know, with this whole coronavirus thing, it's been really difficult to get up and, and I, I love being at the United Arts Club. I don't know, who, that's not where you're doing it from, Alan, no, no. No, 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 I'm doing it from my home studio here. Um, yeah, and all of yeah. you are from as well, is that right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I'm heading into Carsfield to get the hair done. As you can see, it's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Alan will give you all the details, Vincent. I, I will, of course. And Noel, thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Noel. And love to all of you. Okay. Thank you, and, and back to you. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Noel. Bye-bye. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are, Vincent, with Kilrelig. No. No, you're not. Well, I, I'll, fill, I'll fill you in after, after this. Uh, yeah, let me know. It's a wonderful place. Colleen has been there. Autumn has been there. A few others that, that, that have been on here. Um, I think Hugh is as well. Anyway, um, okay. So anybody else like to ask yeah. a question? Oh, I have... I just wanted to um, yeah. speak up about, gosh, that was phenomenal to see your process and everything. And oh, Kilrelli, yes, the light is so cool. I think you'd really love it. Um, <laughs> but yes, I, I just am blown away by your um, commitment to finding your voice through experimentation and all the journaling. I learned so much from that from you. And um, just wanted to thank you for your generosity 
in kind of sharing your advice and art all over the years. Um, but yes, I just, I love how you, um, how you do the whites in your paintings and how you do the light. And um, it's just, it's phenomenal to see all of your work. Um, you have such a distinct eye and like watching you in your process, you really bring so much to the spaces that you're viewing. Um, you show me New York and all the spaces that I'm familiar with in a completely new viewpoint that is so refreshing and so inspiring. Um, it makes me actually want to go back to the city right now as well. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> really amazing work. Thank you, Vincent. Oh, you're welcome. I really, um, I really, when I when I started painting uh, and and experimenting with the subjects in the city, I was after capturing something about what I experienced when I lived in the city. I wanted to uh, get that feeling, that edge, and that energy about what real life was like there. So that was important to me. And I really love the graffiti you do, like the way it's so gestural and so quick, but it's so masterful. Like it, it's phenomenal to see that within your work. It has so much voice. Thank you. It's fun. Enjoy that. Very good. Thanks for that, Colleen. Anybody else before I read out one? No? Okay. Um, Marketa Babakova says, if you could give advice, or sorry, if you could give one advice to basically starting uh, self-taught artists, what would it be? That you can do it, um, and you should realize that um, it's obtainable, um, and just um, the process of writing is so good because you it, it lets you figure out what you know, and it lets you figure out what you don't know, and when you find those things that you don't know, you target them and then you go get that piece. And you get pieces from one thing and you get pieces from another thing and you bring it together. Um, uh, DVDs, uh, watching someone paint, a uh, demo, anytime you can see a live demo is a great experience. Um, watching, uh, painting things on YouTube, um, you know, books, that's, that's all I did. And then when an opportunity comes to study with someone like a workshop or something like that, something short and intense, that's a great experience. Um, if it's someone good that you identify with and you think they have good information, you do that, you take notes while you do it. Uh, the most important thing is watching them demo more than you painting and then you go back to your studio and you try to apply what you learned. If you come away with one or two things, that's a success. And little by little, you, you grow and get better. And you only get better. Very good and, advice. Uh, life drawing. Do life drawing. That's a great experience too. I do that all the time. Very good. Very good. Onya Curran says, unbelievable work. I really enjoy that. Thanks. Thanks, Onya, for that. Um, anybody else before we wrap up? Hugh. Do you want to say anything, Hugh? Or are you? Oh, hold on, you're, you're, you're. Am I mute now? Yeah, yeah you're, you're okay now. I can hear you. I, I think that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Excellent. Really wonderful. Oh, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else? Yes, well, your work's very amazing, Vincent. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. That's great. Anybody else then? No? Okay. All right. Okay. So look, Vincent, what can I say? I mean, this has just been unbelievable. Um, it, it was such a pleasure to, to, to see your work and also to kind of get the enthusiasm that you have. You're very motivational. And I know you're, you're a, a real 24-7 man. You know, uh, I did ask Vincent before, uh, what are his hobbies? What does he do when he's not painting? And he says, drawing. What do you do when you're not drawing? I paint. <laughs> so, I mean, dedication, this guy has it. And, and it's no wonder that, that his work has, has reached the level it has as a result. So thank you, Vincent. And you're very generous with your time and also your knowledge. And we really appreciate that. Very, very unique. Well, thank you for having me. It, it's, it's a good thing to share. And, um, you know, you, you gain things from that. And I like to do that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Okay, and uh, on a final note, I'd just like to say, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. By subscribing, 
you're basically highlighting the work of artists um, to their benefit. So, so you know, please do so. Um, and uh, everyone benefits as a result, the viewers and the people who are featured. So thank you all for watching and look forward to seeing you next Saturday where we've got somebody very interesting who works in wood. Very, very fine work. And I think you'll enjoy that. So do join me next week. And thank you again so much, all of you, for tuning in. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.